We've all seen those videos of American and British expats, English speakers, native English speakers trying to pronounce what are supposedly the most difficult German words to pronounce. Most of us are familiar with the list, what words they are. Now, I'm not going to do the same video again. I'm not going to fall into that trap. Me being an Englishman, an English speaker, I'm going to enlist the help of a special friend of mine, German me. Ah, Mahlzeit, Richie. What geht? He's going to be helping me pronounce all the words properly. I can't do that because I'm English, of course. But I'm going to be looking at what it is that makes these words so difficult for English speakers, native speakers of English to pronounce. And asking the question, are these the most difficult German words to pronounce? Let's get stuck straight in then to our first word. And this is the first word that often comes up on this standard list. You Google it, you look at the videos on YouTube and you find number one is this German me. 555. Now I have to say this one is not the most difficult. What There's a couple of factors that make it a little bit difficult and that is if you see it written it looks really imposing this like big compound noun. It's really unusual for English speakers to see what is in fact for us 555. Five separate words in, in English written all as one word and it is an unusual peculiarity of the German language. I love it. I think I love these compound nouns. It's particularly crazy when it comes to numbers. Why do you do that? Who knows? But it's great. 555. The sounds in there itself, maybe there is nothing really in there that's too difficult for English people to pronounce, to be able to pronounce it in a, a, an understandable way. You probably say with an English accent, 500, 100, 55. Which is understandable, but it's not quite right. The, the things that are in there that are not common to the English language are, of course, the um, the U's, the umlauts, the U with a little dot over the top. Fünf would be the correct pronunciation. An English person will probably say something more like fünf, which is understandable, but it's not quite right. And then, of course, fünfzig, we don't really have the sound... We don't have the, the sound, the same Z sound, the Z sound, but we do have an equivalent like it's, cats, let's, a TS at the end of a word. It's just learning to, I mean, it's difficult at the front of a word, but it's at the beginning of a word, but in the middle of a word, 50, 50. Not too difficult. Unusual sound again is the G sound, which is the equivalent of a CH. 50 is like saying ich, I, ich bin, 50. Um, it's actually the, that's the proper Hochdeutsch pronunciation. Incidentally, in the south of Germany, we will hear, you will hear people in certain regions saying "fünfzig," but an "i" before a "g" makes the "g" ch sound "fünfzig." So it's really just the confusion of this big compound noun for this one one number, this 555, which would be five words in English, if I'm not mistaken. What I found I find even more. Impressive is the uh, number 7254. That's probably even more of a challenge for English people. As I say, I'm not going to try and pronounce these words. I'm going to leave it up to German me. And we're going to move on to the next one, which is this. It's on the screen now. How's this pronounced, German me? Brötchen. Yeah, this is, of course, the German for a bread roll, a staple part of any German diet. If you want to see a video all about German bread, click on the link here. That was quite a successful video. German bread, it's a cl big cliche. It's been said so many times, but German bread is the best. There is no debate. German bread is great. Anyway, this then, the bread roll. So this is getting a little bit more difficult, I think, now from the point of view of pronunciation. It's not a long compound word. Most people would kind of, first of all, we don't have an U uh in English. There's no umlauts. We don't have this U uh sound. So that is definitely very difficult. You would, an English person would get quite close to pronouncing this in that they would use a, the nearest sound would be the U, uh, U, uh, Brötchen, Brötchen. And instead of the CH sound, which is Brötchen, Chin, maybe the S, S, H sound that we have a SH. Brötchen would be probably the closest. It would be again, it'd be understandable if you're speaking to an English speaker and they say, "Ich hätte gerne fünf Brötchen." You'd understand if they didn't say, "Ich hätte gerne fünf Brötchen." So there's a couple of things in there. 
first of all the umlaut of course ooh, we don't have an ooh sound and then the ch but you can get away with with this kind of cologne rhineland type brutchen it's a hard one fair enough and i think this next one steps it up a level though here's another one that i'm gonna leave to my this is really difficult because it's got ah this one's got another thing that's difficult for German, for English speakers in it. This is the two R's and an umlaut. Now I find this is a difficult umlaut. How's it pronounced? German me. Rührei. Yes, scrambled egg then. Now as I say, the R sound, the proper high German R sound that comes from the back of the throat is very different, different to the English r, r, r sound. Learning languages, you have to master a whole different range of R's if you try speaking Spanish, German and English in, in, a, in the same sentence, you have to go from the Spanish pero and perro to the German Richie to the German, sorry, sorry, the English Richie to the German Richtig. So you have to be aware of these things when learning German and two times in Rührei as I say, I'll leave this up to my, my German self, German me, I don't try and pronounce um, I scrambled egg in German, it's very difficult. But two German R's that you have to get from the back of your throat, this very, very alien to English speakers, and then a, an U in the middle, I think is the most difficult umlaut sound. You've got U and E, and okay, it's difficult to actually get U and E really right in that then a is not an e. English speakers will tend to say a to both an e, an e sound. So you, you say universitate and not universitate, or maybe at best universität. Even some Germans don't really distinguish between a and e, so we'll let the English off um, with this. But my definitely for me the most difficult umlaut to pronounce is the u sound it's really difficult it's still difficult for me to now say it when it's not in the word if you ask me to say für für München just to think of two words that have got um, u sounds in them it's a lot easier Rührei is very difficult because you've got this and the u, you've really got your mouth doing somersaults it's a difficult one granted uh, this is another one that always comes up and I've don't think this one really belongs in the list. This is not too difficult for English speakers to pronounce, but I'm going to let German me pronounce it. How's it pronounced? German me. Schlittschuhlaufen. Yeah, it's ice skating. I don't think there's too much in there that's really difficult for us to pronounce. Schlittschuhlaufen. Schlittschuhlaufen. Doesn't belong in the list, in my opinion. Sorry about that. Now this next one is the one that produced the most laughter at a, on the clips that I've seen. There's very famous clips with, of course, Connor and Silas. You now don't know who they are. Two expat American footballers in, stationed in Germany. They had a real difficult time pronouncing this one, which is a word for squirrel. And I have to say, to be fair, Americans have a real problem pronouncing the word squirrel anyway even in their own language correct me if i'm wrong but squirrel there are two vowels there squirrel i e and it has two syllables but whenever i hear americans speaking it's always squirrel sounds to me like it's spelt with a german u umlaut squirrel all in one one syllable <laughs> and the word mirror also mirror spiegel spieglein spieglein an der wand Mirror, mirror on the wall. Mirror? Anyway, we're talking about German, not about English pronunciation. Americans, feel free to correct me and say that your pronunciation is better than the English, but for me, those words have two syllables in it. And this one is a squirrel. How do you pronounce it in German? Me. Eichhörnchen. Yeah, so lots of familiar things in there that we are we know now from words like Brötchen and Rührei that are difficult. Again, an umlaut sound, U. A s two ch sounds uh, and an r in there but this is not really a, a same r you don't have to pronounce it unless you're of course you're from the cologne area and it's eichhörnchen you don't need to put your r in there so it's a difficult one lots of difficult factors in there and it's been the source of some amusement on various videos definitely next one 
This one's a little bit of a cheat for me. I'll let uh, German me pronounce it first of all. This is rubber duck with the bath thing you take in the bath, rubber ducky, and I'll explain why it's a bit of an exaggeration and a cheat, just like the next one, in fact. How's it pronounced, German me? Creature Entchen. Yeah, so your little rubber ducky that you take in the bath with you, like Bert and Ernie. Which one was it that had these rubber ducky? Which one was that? I can't remember. Bert or Ernie. Anyway. It's got the CH in there, but that's the only thing that's the, the real problem because creature enter, and I normally hear it as just as creature enter, which has not got this little diminutive form, the CH, the HYUN at the end. So it's only really the, the HYUN at the end, this CHEN, this uh, thing at the end that makes it difficult. And also, BADE enter, BADE ENTHYUN. It's probably just as, as common. If it doesn't squeak, the, the creation is, is he squeak, 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 and they don't all squeak, to be honest. So, it's not really going to, it wouldn't make my list. Creature engine, I can pronounce that, and I'm English. Let's move on to the next one. This one's difficult, but again, it's cheating, in that it's not so common. It's kind of playing with common themes to make it more difficult for English speakers. This is a matchbox, a box of matches. What about that in German, German me? Schreichholzschächtelchen. Yeah, and as I say, it's cheating because most people will know it and just know it as a schachtel. Schachtel is the box. Okay, it is a small box, the box of matches, but it's not necessarily made into this diminutive form. Schächtelchen. It's overstressing the point. So you get Streichholzschächtelchen. It's a long compound word. It's got the Z in there, the Z and the Sh and the a and all one after the other. It's difficult for English speakers, let's admit it. This next one, actually genuinely, now no joking aside, this is one word that I have to sometimes stop and actually readjust my mouth to, to pronounce because it is a difficult word. But again, I'm going to say it's cheating. It's the German word for director and German me, this is pronounced how? Regisseur. Yeah, and as most of you have picked up on, it is in fact a uh, French word. It isn't strictly speaking a Germanic word, ger word of Germanic origin. This comes. This has been borrowed from French, and it's very difficult for me to pronounce. And I think the main reason is because there's a there's a sound in there that isn't really common to the German language. It's the 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 G sound is not a normal German sound. This is really definitely borrowed from French. It starts off re which is difficult, you've got to get your R working, and then all of a sudden you have to change to this zh, zh. The only real way to actually write this in German, like in the word Dschungel, and it's not quite the same word, you have zh and j, zh and j, zh, zh. I think that would be common in Russian, you have this zh sound in, in Russian, people call Zhenya, for, ex for example, and you get it in French, Jérôme, but it's not really common in, in German. Uh, the way you probably write it phonetically would be D S C H. It's almost like jungle, jungle, of course, in German. But it's a bit of a cheat. Regisseur is very difficult. The E U R sound, of course, is the equivalent of the German U. Uh, the O with an umlaut, very difficult, still difficult for, for me. And this reminds me of that I'm actually currently trying to learn a little bit about chess and there is a move in chess which is called castling in chess. You take your king and you move him to safety and the, what's it called, the rook jumps over and puts him, guards him in the, in the corner. It's a very special move in chess if you don't know chess. If you do know chess, comment down below, oh you're a chess player. I've been recently been getting into it, and this in German is called Rochade. And for whatever reason, I feel this, find this really difficult. It's obviously because of the R sound and the CH sound, the hard CH sound. There are, of course, different CH sounds. There's a soft CH sound which comes more whispery from the front of the mouth, like in words like Ich, Ich liebe dich, for me is a very soft, gentle sounding word. And then you've got after O's and A's in the in the German language, the CH's and this hard throaty sound. So, lachen, krach, and then you've got this uh, loch, and in this this case it's roch, roch. There actually there's a word 
um, smelt. Es roch nach vergammelt. It, it smelt moldy and putrid. So, rochade, very difficult word, and the, the verb rochieren. That one's a, a challenge. And it reminds me also about how I used to, when I was first over in Germany, I've mentioned this in other videos, how I used to pronounce the, try and practice the, the R sound in Germany. I would catch the metro, the um, Straßenbahn, U-Bahn, the line U35, U35, from the Bochum Centrum to the university, and I would pass Brennschäler Straße. And the, the, as anyone who's traveled on these these trams and underground trains know, there's an, an announcement that tells you what the next stop is and which side to get off the, the tram. And it would say, Nächste Haltestelle, or Nächste Halt, yeah, uh, depending on where you are, Nächste Haltestelle, Brennschäler Straße, Ausstieg, rechts or Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts and that gave me that was my sentence that I would use to train myself to pronounce this German R because I was very aware that I wasn't hitting it right every time so Brennschäder Straße there's R's in there and then Ausstieg rechts so good job it wasn't getting out on the left so it wasn't Ausstieg links so it gave me a chance to practice saying rechts Brennschäder Straße rechts, Ausstieg rechts. And I also noticed very quickly that I could pronounce it upright, like this. And then I'd lie down, and I, 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 this, I was this obsessed about getting my German um, correct pronunciation, correct, correct German pronunciation, that I would go to bed, I would be lying down and be, before I went to sleep, trying to practice pronunciation. And I noticed, for some reason, that in a lying down horizontal position, I wasn't able to pronounce the German R. And I would lie there for ages. And uh, I must have trained the muscles in my in my throat eventually, because I can now do it. I'm going to try it now. Brennschäderstraße. Ausstieg in Fahrtrichtung rechts. Yes, I am that mental. I'm going to end off with some really confusing compound nouns now. These come over these often often make these lists. The one I'm going to start off with is this German me, which means legal insurance companies. German me? Rechtsschutzversicherungsgesellschaften. And I think apart from the obvious the R's in there, the only really confusing thing about this is it's just the play on the, the idea of the German compound nouns that obviously Rechtsschutz is legal protection you could or legal you could actually make an argument for that to be two words in in english so legal protection recht schutz and then versicherung is insurance and gesellschaften that there those are the companies or societies the only thing is that it's confusing is that it's a big compound noun it's it's not necessarily difficult to pronounce but it's difficult to read if you're not familiar with the meaning, if you can't break it down, and you'd learn German, and you know the words separately, you know what Versicherung is, you know what a Gesellschaft is, and you know what Rechtsschutz is, you know what Rechts, Recht, everything to do with the law is, you learn to see it, you see it, you break it down. You would at least expect a hyphen in English or two separate words. That's what this is all about, really. Other ones that, that are common on these lists is the uh, Donau Dampfschifffahrts Gesellschaftskapitän, but you quickly learn to just see it quickly. You know, the door now is the Danube. Dampf, Schiff is a steam, ship. Fahrt, Gesellschaft, again, the company and Kapitän, Captain. This is the only real challenge with, with these. Um, someone went even further. I'm going to try and read this one. Uh, I don't really know if this exists, but it's just a really great idea of how you can play with German compound nouns and put this on screen if it will fit. I don't know if we've got room here actually to make it nice and small. Donau Dampfschifffahrts Elektrizitäten Hauptbetriebswerks Bau unter Beamtengesellschaft. That one's even a challenge for me. Just seen it there. I've just copied it off the internet and seen it. And the German word of the year 1999 which is no longer in in use to be honest. There were I remember back then I was actually working in the labels industry printing and selling labels to the food industry so this was a very important thing back then remember the thing with the Kreuzfeld Jakob the BSE the mad cow disease thing what we need were these 
uh, was a law which addressed labeling of beef to be able to track and trace the origin of the, the beef so you can rule out any dangerous beef and we had of course the Rindfleisch Etikettierungsüberwachungsaufgabenübertragungsgesetz a mouthful very very nice word for a very very horrible subject but again you learn to see it you know that Rindfleisch is beef and Etikettierung is labeling Überwachung is monitoring Aufgaben übertragen, Aufgaben, the tasks, Übertragung is transfer, transferring the tasks, and this is the, the Gesetz, the law, all about it. It takes training, I suppose, but I've been here now for 11 gazillion years. So I have no excuse to not be able to pronounce it, but again, I'm just an Englishman, that's why I enlisted the help of my German me. Hope this video was amusing for you. I like looking into the German language at all times. I made a big thing of being able to try and pronounce it properly. I hope I've managed to do so, or at least German me has managed to do so. If you did enjoy the video, please leave me a thumbs up, leave me a like there, comment down below. What are your favourite German words? What are the most difficult words for you to pronounce either in German, if you are learning German or not a native speaker, or if you are a German native speaker, what are the most difficult words for you to speak, pronounce in English or in any other language? And thanks for watching. I will see you in the next one. Macht's gut, Leute.